Good evening. Oh, it's a great night for some self-esteem. <laughs> I hope you have a drink with you. Um, and I am excited to do this. I find that doing this workshop in January is important because we are considering new things. We are all stepping into a new year of development um, in our own personal lives, whatever that is we're focusing on. And so uh, this is a great way to just kind of refresh yourselves, reconnect to yourselves, um, and make yourself a priority. Sometimes that's difficult. We all move into um, a place in our life where we're focusing on so many different distractions, and we slowly lose our time for ourself. <laughs> and some people don't even get that a day, you know, they don't have time for themselves. Um, so it is a good class to get you going on it. Um, so everyone in the class is going to get a workbook sent to them. And I am excited about that. The things that we're covering in this workshop aren't all in the workbook. So like the workbook is something that is um, completely separate from it, but it is complementary to it as well. So welcome. Uh to this workshop. So it is a two, we're doing two sessions um, in this workshop, but I do want to start right away because there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover. Um, and really you don't have to do much, but listen, you may find that um, you want to take some notes because like I said, some of the stuff I'm covering is not in the workbook. So I wanted to start off with just focusing on yourself and go through uh, a couple of different things. I want you to reflect, take note on the things that kind of pop into your mind as we're going through this workshop. I do want to start off with the six pillars of self-esteem, and I like to call them pillars because they do help hold structure with who you are. And they are something that can move into a spiritual um, alignment as well as an attainment. So these are practices, okay? Look at these six pillars as, as purposeful living, steps to take. And the first one that I actually wanna talk about is um, what the six pillars are. The, the six pillars are living consciously, okay, self-acceptance, self-responsibility, self-assertiveness, and living purposely, as well as personal integrity. And self-esteem. You know, one thing that I find very interesting is think about what determines the level of self-esteem that we have, because what determines the level of self-esteem is our individual self. We, as a person, determine our level of self-esteem. And so when we put into a practice a practice implies a discipline of acting a certain way over and over again consistently, okay? And that's important when it comes to spirituality and our practices. You know, uh, the first time I did a money spell, you know, it didn't work. You know, like I had to learn how to practice my craft and we do need to apply certain disciplines when we want to change things. So it's not action by fits or, or a, a reaction to a crisis rather than a way of operating day by day 
with whatever issues are, whether they're big or small, a way of behaving that is also a way of being. Um, and that's important, okay? You cannot truly be yourself if you can't build your self-esteem because then you're not connecting or accepting yourself. So to it is important for us to admit errors where we have flawed ourselves and our self-esteem. And this is what I call enlightenment. Enlightenment to me is when we receive wisdom or guidance and it's like it takes a weight off our shoulders, right? Like it lightens our spirit. <clears throat> so living consciousness or living consciously is bringing awareness to my activities and what I'm doing. And even if we bring just 5%, like just a little bit more awareness to our activities during our day, we'll be able to deal and receive the enlightenment that we need. We'll also learn how to deal with people so that we don't have to be on guard, that we can just be real, right? And we don't have to hold ourselves a, a certain way. We're free to be. And if we do become more aware of ourselves, then we actually release insecurities because we're bringing more awareness to our priorities as we're being aware of them. So our self-esteem is a true motivator on the things that we want. And our self-esteem is the reputation we acquire with ourselves, right? Like this is a temple. But what is inside is so divine and it's important for us to, to be aware of ourselves and where we're sabotaging or blocking or, or fearful, right? And we can run, we can't run from our dark side, but we can hide from our bright side, right? We can actually hide from anything that does threaten us to make us stand out or stand alone. But when that happens, when we feel like there is a threat or, or we're a little worried to, to come forward, there's a fear in, way, in a way that calls for the awakening. And when you allow yourself to stand out and say, no, I'm breaking this that's blocking my self-esteem, you do awaken a certain aspect of you. And it's usually the hero archetype. It's like all of a sudden, you know, that that hero self wants to attain and show you like, yes, I can play and, and do what, what it is I want to do. So if we fully realize that our self-acceptance doesn't evade the negativity or the worst stuff within us, it doesn't evade the best either, right? It's just our self-acceptance. Think of uh, uh, a negative self, uh, self aspect is just like a thought. It's a feeling. It's a moment. But it can return. And we want to, and that's why we want to be self-aware. Because the change occurs when we take responsibility of our own thoughts. We know how to take responsibility for our actions or the decisions we're making. But let's take it further this year and take responsibility for our own thoughts. And, you know, that is something that I did. I did it for 30 days and it changed my life. I remember when I got into uh, doing more psychic stuff, like I really, when I started believing in my abilities and understanding the different aspects of life and spirit um 
it really changed the way I saw things. And it helped me take responsibility of my thoughts. So I, for one month, neutralized every negative thought. A negative thought set, spoke to me, you're an idiot. I said, I would change it and say, you know, I'm a genius. And if you just do that for 30 days, your mind and the guidance that you receive will both speak very differently. But what you'll learn is you'll learn what the voice sounds like, whether it's your own or one of spirit. And I know that sounds so crazy when they talk like this, like, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but you will notice and learn eventually what the voice of spirit and guidance, of guidance, clear guidance sounds like, or how it communicates. Maybe it's vision. You know, one of your psychic pathways will become active. And so we do want to, that's one reason why we want to take responsibility for our own thoughts. As soon as we go into a neutral state, whether that's declaring, you know, and, and neutralizing a negative thought, we are in a place of power. That is our divine self. Our divine self is not, you know, positive or negative. It's like when you can see both ways, right? When you can see the good and the bad and still be okay, your authentic self. Um, of course, when we go into a more positive state, we heighten. You know, that's how we connect to higher realm spirits, right? We go into a lower state, we'll connect to lower realm spirits. And, and that's one reason why um, seeking silence every day, whether it's your morning cup of coffee, it does help you. It does connect you to your power. And I find that quite important. So that was one way I learned how to trust the spirit world was by asking, but also neutralizing all the negative things that spoke to me. And I was at that time living in probably a <laughs> in a trauma response lifestyle. I don't know. But <laughs> I mean... But it did take some training. You know, I had to tell myself to F off. I'm not listening to you. You know, I had to, I looked in the mirror and did exercises and just listened to what came to me until I could change the way I spoke to myself and the things that I heard about myself. And, and to this day, every morning, that's what I do to myself. I, I look in the mirror and I say the things that I need to say. And I also draw sigils or whatever it is that I want, <laughs> but it is important. So changing occurs our our change and transformation occurs when we take responsibility for our thoughts or when we uh, affirm our thoughts or put intention into it so we're responsible for our choices and actions and to be responsible is so that we can be also free of moral blame or guilt or anger right we're responsible we're the chief right? We're the medicine of our life and our behavior, okay? And responsible means response, able, right? Like you are able to respond, right? Um, so there is, you know, something to look at there. We also have to practice self-assertiveness and Self-assertiveness is to live authentically, to speak and act from who you are. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative or, or what your feelings are. It does matter, but you know what I mean? Like, uh, but to actually be yourself as a way of life and making that a rule. And that is sometimes tough. Like, I don't know how to say no. I am so bad at saying no. Okay. Like I will put myself out of the way <laughs> and avoid. So I don't have to say no. I had to, 
call my parents from the basement of my house when I was younger and, and, and get my, them to come and rescue me because I said yes to a $4,000 vacuum. <laughs> There was no way that I was going to be able to do it when I was like 19. Okay. So some of us have the difficulty saying no. And that was one of mine. So <laughs> learning how to be, that's so embarrassing, but it was so embarrassing. And then, you know what? I have to just finish with a story. So then my, my dad comes over and he's all like being manly, like, get out. She's not buying a vacuum from you. Okay. And I go out with my girlfriends that night to the bar and shit you not. The vacuum salesman is there at the bar I go to talking to a girl I work with that works at the same restaurant as me. And she ended up getting a job selling vacuums after. I mean, I was so embarrassed, but either way, I twerked it out. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get back, back online with that one. So to practice self-assertiveness is to live authentically, right? Just be you. Make that your rule now, okay? And if you don't know how to, to speak and make to speak your boundaries, learn to figure it out. Just let it come out, okay? Um, but sometimes we do have to self-sacrifice ourselves, And of course, you would see the benefit of why right? You would get the vision that it is going to make a difference. But if it's not going to make a difference, and you do have to be more self-assertive, as well as being assertive enough to make the changes and the forward movements that you want, right? Whether you're feeding that energy, or you're doing magic, or you're working every day eight hours to make something happen, right? Assertiveness, like you have to feed it. I believe in feeding everything I want every day, right? I want, you know, this to work there. It's all a, an energy and a spirit to me. And I have like 36 of them right now, <laughs> right? Like all over the place. But that is the energy of assertiveness, right? It does, it does create the cycle. It goes into the function, the universal law of function and creates something, something that's perfect. So the other thing about assertiveness is that you do have to trust your mind and you have to know that you're worthy of happiness and you're worthy of the things that you want. And you're actually worthy than more than that. Like we are so limited. Okay. There's people out there that are, you know, manifesting billions. Okay. So you need to trust and you need to, and that's why when we do magic, desire is so important because our desires heighten us and they take us out of that security mode. And as soon as you desire something and you're that higher realm consciousness or connecting to something that is a higher vibe than you, you're connected to that. You're manifesting. There's an imprint in that. And that is an essence. So our self-esteem is an essence. It's a soul essence. And you need to trust what you want, okay? Even if it's justice, you need to trust that, that what you want is, is worthy to make you happy, okay? Like you're worthy to have it. And it's not the achievements that prove our worth, but it's the process of achieving it. That's how we learn how, what we develop, right? The effectiveness, how did it come about? That's what I love about magic. When I do a money spell, I love to see how it comes about. Sometimes it's, you know, I go gambling and, and I hit a jackpot. Other times it's like someone asks me to do a private class, you know, like it's amazing. And that's how I seek bliss is to see how my achievements come back because my achievements do show me my ability and how I am connected in developing my life and my effectiveness when it comes to how I want to live and the process of achieving 
what it is that I want. And when you're so focused on the things that you're, you want to achieve, see, I want to achieve what I want, not for myself, but for my son, you know, for, for my family, right? I believe in that old, those old days, like everything, my son, I see him, everything I have in this house is yours. I'm like, make sure you look up and see what, how much this tarot deck is. Sometimes I put prices in, in my things that I have, because I have decks that are like $1,500 and there's no way he would know, right? So for me, uh, it is, it is that process, right? Of, a tree, of achieving. So we also need to live purposely. We need to use our powers for the attainment of our goals that we've selected. Our goals can be raising a family. It could be earning a living, starting a business, being more positive, being more healthy. It could be all of what I said, right? We can have, you know, I like to have something and, and I look at each month in my life uh, for the next year and I put down my goal of what it is that I want to focus on. Sometimes I got to focus, it changes, right? Depending on the energies of the universe. But at least I am trying to live purposely and I'm using my psychic powers or my time of silence, my morning coffee to just take note on how I feel and, and what energies come. So living purposely to me is magical. Everything's a sign, right? So everybody's a bitch one day, I need to purify. <laughs> okay, like, so living purposely is about using our powers. And it is using our powers for the attainment of our goals. But also to have a simple connection, right? Our life isn't meant to be chaotic. It's not to meant to have too much to contain. It, it, you know, it's meant to be an, at each element in your life is in play, right? Earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. How are they in play in your life, right? And it is our goals that lead us forward, that call on us. The things that we truly want and the ideas that pop into our life, whether we see it on Facebook or we dream of it, those goals are the goals and the ideas that lead us forward, that are calling you. And they're calling you because they want you to exercise your gifts, your abilities, the energy of that existence, right? I know right away, if I get an idea, that I got to put down. And if I don't listen to the universe, or I don't listen to that, that idea, I am dragged out. Okay, like, I'm paralyzed until I do what the universe brought to me, right? And, and some of you may have noticed that too, that you get an idea, and all of a sudden, you don't follow through and chaos hits, right? Or maybe you're not aware of that. But the same with spiritual knowledge. If we attain too much spiritual knowledge and, and our gifts are all inside and it hasn't been able to practice, um, it can create chaos. So living purposely, having your goals, moving forward and, and looking for those energies of existence that will bring your abilities are about are huge. You know, the challenge for people today isn't easy, but it is to maintain personal high standards while feeling that we are living our life, our moral life, the way we feel fit, right? That's our willpower, our willpower and our, and our purpose is about our life and our essence. So the practice of personal integrity is huge. Because integrity is the integration of ideas, it's our convictions, it's our standards, it's our beliefs, it's our behaviors. And so when our behavior is, is matched with our professional values, or when ideals and practice match up, we have integrity. But I like to take it a little further because to me, it's when my higher self and my human self 
both want the same thing. And I'm going to get into more of that in the next class, I think, depending on where we are. But um, so our, our behavior is really important to what it is, right? And it's also allows us to see, you know, what it, our integrity. Same with pride. Like pride is the emotional reward of achievement, right? But some people feel ashamed or they don't know how to, to handle pride or they think that pride is egotistical, but it's actually an emotional response, an emotional blessing because it changes us in a positive way and it is an achievement. It's not a negative thing to, that we have to overcome. It's a value that we attain. And that's where you want to, like, what are the, the five things that you're most proud of? Think about those five things that you're most proud of. Well, I'm proud of my family and the connections that I have with them. I am proud of my determination and breaking my procrastination. That's huge for me. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do anything, <laughs> but I do. Um, I'm proud of the home I'm, I create for myself. I know how important that is. It is my solarium, my bubble away from the world. Um, and I'm proud of my connection that, that motivates me to create the life that I'm living. So you want to think about what are those five things that you're proud of? Put that into your mind. You have five fingers right now while I go about. Because when we live consciously, we do take responsibility for our choices and actions. And we respect the rights of others. And we follow our own bliss. All of a sudden, we don't care what other people are doing. They're no longer triggering us. So our self-esteem is actually the bridge between who we are and what we do. It's the bridge between our internal and our external success or who we are, right? No one else will ever be you, okay? Nobody else can actually have your essence and appreciating and accepting your good points and learning and learning to love yourself does not mean that you are conceited or egotistical. It means you're learning to love yourself and manifest and honor the life that you want, which is your purpose. Everything you want and desire is part of your purpose. It's not ego. So ego, our ego is actually a divine aspect of us. It's only untamed until it becomes tamed. And when it's untamed, you know, it's in protection mode. It's in beast mode, right? And once the ego understands that, you honor what it is that it wants. And your selfishness is no longer selfish, right? It becomes a guidance. And before we can go through and give to others, we do need to value and appreciate and love ourselves. Just like anything we learn that we want to share. We have to learn it. So you're learning about yourself as you're honing your skills. And that is important. So let me go into, let me see, where do I want to go from here? I'll put my chat up too. Let me see. How do I do that? Okay. I hope not... Uh, Hope you are getting some insights on that, uh, what we're going through. 
Um, so I do have a little uh, self-esteem test that I'll send you before next class. Okay. Um, I do want to go into, I'm just going through my workbook here. Mm. Let's see. I think we're going to go into my book of shadows with this first. Okay. I hope I don't push on my cord. So if you do have a pen and paper, uh, I'm going to want you to use it, or you can re-listen to this if you want as well. Um, there we go. Oh, I thought I lost it. Okay. So. First, you want to take a look and reflect on, number one, who you are now. Who are you now? You know, write down a few sentences of, of what comes to you. Let yourself see who you are now. And then the next thing is who are you in the future? And you definitely will be able to just those two questions and looking at them later or when you're having your morning coffee, look at those questions again and see what pops in as far as guidance and ideas to get you to where you want to go. Um, that's one reason why vision boards are so good, right? Because they'll help your higher self see what you want your higher self looks through your eyes you know we have to sometimes go through a process to connect to our higher self and to receive messages but our higher self is looking through our eyes 24 7 it's the all-seeing eye it never closes and that's why we do want to have a better self-esteem because when we are feeling good we're connected to our higher self, right? Well, we're, we're processing and seeing things differently. The other question I want you to write down is what do you need? Do you know what it is that you need? Make your needs part of your dream, part of that vision of what you want within the next year, okay? And then what do you want? OK, I usually put a list together for my full moons of my needs, wants and desires so I can see the difference. What do you need? What do you want? What do you desire? OK, and before my desires, when I first started practicing this, it was like my desires were so like fantasy like right? <laughs> it's like I want, you know this but it changes and you'll find that even when you're uh, writing down your desires through the next year your desires will change and it will reflect on how you changed or the things that you need this month compared to the things that you need in six months from now so it's pretty interesting when I started doing my intention papers my intention paper would be like a full eight by 11 loose leaf paper. I had so much stuff I had to get rid of. And then all of a sudden one month I'm sitting there and I couldn't think of anything to get rid of. And I was like, what the hell? And I actually couldn't. I had to make myself think of the things I want to get rid of. And that's when I knew I was actually cleansed from my past. I was released from it. 
because I didn't know what to write on my release. And since then, I find sometimes I get triggers from my past, right? And I'll put that on my paper. But I find that now my releases are about what I've experienced in the month that I just lived and what I don't want to experience in my future. So that alone, your intention papers during your full moons are part of also how you can see yourself develop and grow as you're writing down the things that you're releasing and calling in. You definitely need to understand your passions too. Our self-esteem is built from the things that we're passionate and good with. So what are the things that you enjoy, right? Let that always feed your self-esteem. Sometimes if you feel bored, break away. But you definitely need to focus on your passions. Those will give you your, your skill. And as you feed your passions, your passions become a part of your life because they'll materialize and become something to for you to act on. And you may say, oh, well, how does my painting by numbers going to help me in 20 years? Well, guess what? Maybe in a year from now, you won't have to paint with numbers. Okay. And now you're an artist. So feeding our passions will give us the ability to create a success from it. You know, think about the person that created toothpicks and, and toilet paper. I mean, like, hello, right? We, we all I'm saying is we can actually create a success from anything it is, anything, just even if it's one thing, right? A hairdresser right? Can become very successful. That's what I did out of high school. Some of you don't know that, but I was a hairdresser. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing is, what type of spiritual practices do you practice right now? Okay. You do want to have some kind of spiritual practice. To me, when I do my cards, my tarot deck is my spirit guide, okay? Like those babies, they're, they're like a person to me. When I lost my first deck, I bawled. And I was like mourning for a week. I felt like I lost my best friend. Like that's when I realized how important my tarot were to me, okay? And... So what type of spiritual practices do you take part in? You know, have something that you can go to. If you are, if you have lots of anxiety, then make sure you get 20 minutes, 30 minutes, right? And most of you are in classes. So, you know, you can always pop up a, a video and listen, right? <laughs> I give it to you. It's attainable. So just make sure that you do understand what spiritual practices you want to implement this year, right? Maybe they're Oracle decks, maybe it's tea leaf reading, you know, and you're going to have tea in the afternoon. So put something together and um, put them in your now, okay? What do you, what is your spiritual practice this year? And what do you want to do, right? Do you plan on doing something new? Or are you trying to develop something that's still that you've been developing for a while, right? Maybe you're trying to put something old and something new together, right? But you do have to plan on doing something new, okay? And when we choose what we want to do that's new, then the universe doesn't have to choose what it is for us, okay? Which can sometimes be chaotic. It's like, no, I don't want to learn that lesson. What are you doing? Okay. Um, let me see. So I want to send you um, a PDF. And I don't want you to take this to like to to heart, okay? Because it is a self evaluation, and it's going to be a self evaluation on your self esteem, 
and you don't even have to tell me what you got on it or anything like that, but it will give you an idea of certain aspects that you will want to heal and, and put into your focus. Okay. And we'll do that before the next class, which is, let me just see where I'm trying to find where the next class is. Um, oh, it's posted. I think it was the 19th. I don't know, but it is posted. So we're going to do that for the next class. So until then, just be present and pay attention. Give yourself your complete attention and be open, be honest, be genuine. I mean, you already are all those things. So that's not going to be hard, but you do want to listen attentively to yourself and how you it is that you're responding, right? And, and, and try to pay attention to that. So it is about, you know, being non-judgmental until we meet again of yourself and paying attention to yourself. So I would listen to this one more time before we meet again um, and then do the self-evaluation and we'll do more. So I like to pull cards. I'm going to pull cards on how we're doing and then I'll let you go. Okay, so as far as your self-esteem, how and what should we do to focus on it? Okay. Okay. And I know some of you are still waiting for your shadow workbooks. They are like somewhere. Oh my gosh. I'm having a little bit of a nightmare with some of this mail since Christmas. But you'll get it. Ready? So self-esteem until we meet again. What aspect of your self-esteem should you work on? Should we all work on? Compassion. Look at that. Having compassion for ourself. That's huge, right? That's, I love that. And I feel like you know, I feel like everybody in this group is ready to connect to themselves on a new level. I think everybody has already been able to drop certain aspects and, and you know what that's like and, and take control as far as like mind taking control of, of decisions. Now this is all about yourself. The second card is commitment. So making yourself a priority. I've never gotten this card. I love that. So compassion, commitment. Is there another C that's going to come up? Let's see. Three Cs? No. Forgiveness. So if there is anything that you regret, get rid of it. Okay. Some, some ways to get rid of things that you regret are writing a letter, right? And burning it giving it to the universe. When we write things on paper, the reason why we burn it is because the smoke of that paper is the spirit. So as soon as we light, light our release, it becomes the spirit. It's unleashed into the universe. It goes into the spirit world. And that's why it's important to write it. Our higher self sees us writing what it is that we're putting together. And then when we light it, the universe grabs it and takes care of it. And we can't look at it again because we burnt it. Sometimes we can think about it. And that's the other thing I learned when I was learning about how to connect with magic is at first, when I would do a money spell, I would be like, I would hear you're selfish. And I'd be like, oh my God. Right. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so selfish. And then I'd wonder why my spell wouldn't work. Well, because I let that in. 
So then I do, you know, the money magic spell again because it didn't work, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden, you know, I did it again and I'd hear, oh, going for it again. And I'd say, yes, I sure the hell am. And I had power over that. And that's one reason why I say neutralize the things you don't want to accept. Even if someone is saying something to you that you don't like, I neutralize what they just said to me. I am not going to feel that. And if you just mentally declare that to yourself, your spirit or the spirits around you will take care of it. We are protected more than we know. So start using it. Okay. So I will let you go and we will see you next time. I guess the 15th. So have a fabulous night. Thank you for joining me. Relax and enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. Good evening. Oh, it's a great night for some self-esteem. <laughs> I hope you have a drink with you. Um, and I am excited to do this. I find that doing this workshop in January is important because we are considering new things. We are all stepping into a new year of development um, in our own personal lives, whatever that is we're focusing on. And so uh, this is a great way to just kind of refresh yourselves, reconnect to yourselves um, and make yourself a priority. Sometimes that's difficult. We all move into um, a place in our life where we're focusing on so many different distractions and we slowly lose our time for ourself. <laughs> and some people don't even get that a day, you know, they don't have time for themselves. Um, so it is a good class to get you going on it. Um, so everyone in the class is going to get a workbook sent to them. And I am excited about that. The things that we're covering in this workshop aren't all in the workbook. So like the workbook is something that is, um, completely separate from it but it is complementary to it as well so welcome uh to this workshop so it is a two we're doing two sessions um in this workshop but i do want to start right away because there is a lot of stuff that i want to cover um and really you don't have to do much but listen you may find that um you want to take some notes because like I said, some of the stuff I'm covering is not in the workbook. So I wanted to start off with just focusing on yourself and go through uh, a couple of different things. I want you to reflect, take note on the things that kind of pop into your mind as we're going through this workshop. I do want to start off with the six pillars of self-esteem. And I like to call them pillars because they do help hold structure with who you are. And they are something that can move into a spiritual um, alignment as well as an attainment. So these are practices, okay? Look at these six pillars as, as purposeful living, steps to take. And the first one that I actually want to talk about is um, what the six pillars are. The, the six pillars are living consciously, okay? Self-acceptance, self-responsibility, self-assertiveness, and living purposely, as well as personal integrity. And self-esteem. You know, one thing that I find very interesting is 
think about what determines the level of self-esteem that we have. Because what determines the level of self-esteem is our individual self. We, as a person, determine our level of self-esteem. And so when we put into a practice, a practice implies a discipline of acting a certain way over and over again consistently, okay? And that's important when it comes to spirituality and our practices. You know, uh, the first time I did a money spell, you know, it didn't work. You know, like I had to learn how to practice my craft. And we do need to apply certain disciplines when we want to change things. So it's not action by fits or or a, a reaction to a crisis rather than a way of operating day by day with whatever issues are, whether they're big or small, a way of behaving that is also a way of being. Um, and that's important, okay? You cannot truly be yourself if you can't build your self-esteem because then you're not connecting or accepting yourself. So to it is important for us to admit errors where we have flawed ourselves and our self-esteem. And this is what I call enlightenment. Enlightenment to me is when we receive wisdom or guidance and it's like it takes a weight off our shoulders right? Like it lightens our spirit. <clears throat> so living consciousness or living consciously is bringing awareness to my activities and what I'm doing. And even if we bring just 5%, like just a little bit more awareness to our activities during our day, we'll be able to deal and receive the enlightenment that we need. We'll also learn how to deal with people so that we don't have to be on guard, that we can just be real, right? And we don't have to hold ourselves a, a certain way. We're free to be. And if we do become more aware of ourselves, then we actually release insecurities because we're bringing more awareness to our priorities as we're being aware of them. So our self-esteem is a true motivator on the things that we want. And our self-esteem is the reputation we acquire with ourselves, right? Like this 